I would like to call this meeting to order. Let's have a moment of silence, please. <clears throat> The flag salute. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to and the to republic for which, for which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. Amen. Thank you. May we please have the roll call? Mr. Cowboy. Ms. Donald? Here. Mr. Brody? Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Please on. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Cameron? Yes. Mr. Bodak? Mr. McLaughlin? Here. And Ms. Joseph Kelly? Present. Wonderful. May we please have the reading of Statement of Adequate Notice, Exhibit A. Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act has been given as follows. By advertising the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on September 9th, 2021. Posting notice on the school bulletin boards and main entrances on September 9th, 2021. Posting notice electronically on the district website on September 9th, 2021. By final written notice of the clerk of the Lanco Township on September 9th, 2021. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the August 11th, 2021 regular meeting, August 18th, 2021 regular meeting, Exhibit E, please. Motion, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Second, Dormo. Thank you, Vera. Questions or comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Thank you. May I have a motion to accept the reports of Board Secretary and Treasurer for July 2021, which are in agreement, Exhibit F? Motion. Thank you, Cameron. Second, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Garmo abstain. Thank you. Motion carries. May I have a motion to accept the final board secretary report for June 2021 exhibit G. I think Bob is trying to motion, but he is muted. Oh, he said yes, he is trying to motion. I'll thank second. You. And thank you, Cameron. Questions or comments? Just one comment for uh, the whole board. I am muting board members at times if I'm hearing feedback, just so that the uh, the sound is clear for everyone. Oh. So if you are suddenly muted, it's because I'm I'm doing that to make sure the sound is good. Thank you. You can hear me okay now. We can. Thank you. Any other additional questions or comments related to this motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Garmo abstain. Thank you. Motion carries. Community liaison reports. Riverside High School. Do we have a representative from Riverside High School? I don't believe so by looking at our list of audience members. So we'll move forward to the Delanco PTO. Mrs. Karamanugi and I, I do have a representative from Riverside that reached out to me last week and this week that wanted to share something with the board about Riverside, if, that, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. So uh, I do have some news to share. I don't want to overpromise and under deliver on this, but Riverside and Delanco, uh, we're, we're in talks right now of teaming up to uh, possibly provide a field hockey team. That's a combined effort between both middle schools so that it's a Riverside Delanco um, field hockey team for sixth, seventh and eighth grade. This is being worked on right now uh, between me I, I've talked with Todd Pay over at Riverside, as well as uh, Buddy Micucci, and I'm sure there are other team members on their side working on it too. I'm going to be getting Barry Sade involved because he's the middle school principal, and so uh, no matter what, we're working on that. It's not a definite yet, but uh, things are looking good. 
it's it's Riverside reached out about it, and I I really appreciate their collaboration with this. That's awesome. That would that great. would be great. Yeah. Absolutely. Is there a representative from the Delanco PTO? I don't see any. Okay, uh, DISA, Recreation, and Township Committee. I don't see anyone with their hands up, <clears throat> so we'll move this forward. So I would like to welcome everyone to this evening's meeting. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day and evening to attend. And uh, without further recognition, or excuse me, without further more, we will move this forward to public comment because we don't have any student recognition at this time. We'll move it forward to public comment on agenda items. Is there anybody who has a public comment on an agenda item? I don't see any hands up. So I will close the public comment. And I didn't see anything online as well for public comment on an agenda item. So we will now move this forward to the superintendent's report, Mr. Mersinger. All right, thank you, Mrs. Kamenugian. So uh, superintendent's report, a motion is requested to approve the following letters A through G and uh, no other further comments at this time. A motion is requested. So moved. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Questions or comments? Um, Dharma with a question. Yes. Um, this question is for Mr. Mersinger. Um, are all levels of staff familiar with uh, procedures for reporting any possible bullying incidents in that, I believe it's same day verbal um, reporting to the district bullying coordinator or the district board, uh, bullying coordinator designee? I mean, crossing guards, bus drivers, YMCA volunteers, in addition to, I mean, uh, YMCA workers, teachers, are they familiar with the timeline for that? My question for you would be, how does this relate to the superintendent's report as uh, indicated? Um, just for HIV and suspensions, it's Th related. There was no information indicated in that report. Okay, I will save that question for new business. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we had a motion and a second. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, thank you. Instruction and program, classifications and place, placements, confidential exhibit M. <clears throat> and we'll move forward to the budget and finance. A motion is requested to approve the following line items, A through S. I need a motion. Motion by Phil. Thank you, Second. Phil. Thank you, Bob. Questions or comments? Um, Dharma with a question and a comment, but if someone wants to go before me, that, does anyone want to go before me? No. Didn't we go over okay. this in our pre-meeting? I just have a comment for the public. So um, according to Mr. Mersinger, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriation Act funds um, we got $285,355, and we, um, that was incorporated into the 21-22 budget. The funds were utilized for additional protective equipment, cleaning products, sanitizers, HVAC filters, repairs to HVAC, and continued employment for existing custod custodial and maintenance staff. Um, my comment is, I, those are, I know those are approved uses for that 285,000. I, my comment is I just feel a little bit disappointed that we couldn't have used some of that money for another approved use, which is addressing learning loss, which is a big um, factor with COVID. That's my comment. And my question is uh, two questions. Can we have can, uh, if the board wants, since I'm only one board member, could we have an itemized account of what that $285,000 went to? For example, uh, how many people were paid with those funds, that sort of thing. That's what, question one. 
Well, Ms. Dharma, before you continue, what, what are you referring to when you said Mr. Mersinger indicated? I, I, I certainly um, I'm, I'm, indica I'm reading a, an email, uh, Ray Esser to funds of Friday, June 18th, 2021. Um, that okay. was in response to my email when I asked what those Esser to funds were going to be used for. And now I'm looking at the um, transfer transfer of funds document that um, Stephen Burden sent me. So I, I do see that figure there, the, um, the ESSER II grant adjustments and the, um, the uh, ESSER II instructional account, I guess that is, for the $285,355. What letter so, is it? The, um, this is in line item transfers. This is referring to line item transfers, which is letter B of the budget and finance report. This is a tran this is on the um, transfers document that Mr. Burns sent us. It's about the um, that SO2 funding. So I'm that not was- I'm not connecting the dots to my email from June, which indicated uh, information about the coronavirus response and relief appropriations. I'm still not connecting it. Could you? You mean to the agenda, what? like why I have that comment right now? Is that yes, what you mean? That, yes. Okay, because because right now we're dealing with that money um, because that's one of the transfers that we're voting on today. So since we're voting on that, um, that ESSER II funding right now, I think it's appropriate for me to make a comment on what the funds were used for my, and my disappointment that, um, you know, they, they were necessary use, they were allowed uses that um, you delineated for me in the June 18th email, but I, I feel a little bit sad. I'm hoping we can talk, you know, at a, a future time about how we can address learning loss in the district. I agree with you, but one, I don't know if you stated for the public and the board that my June 18th email also indicated that those funds were used for continued employment for existing custodial and maintenance. Yes, I did. I did read that. So that's all. certainly something I hope wouldn't disappoint you or anyone that those funds were used for that, that that was a bulk of those funds. Okay. So yeah, if I could just, I mean, I'm requesting to know if the board would like those funds to be itemized so I can know just how much went to salary and what how much went to HVAC filter. If the board doesn't want to do that, I know I'm only one member of the board. Well, but, fair. this is uh, Bob Doby. Why didn't you send a, an email to Stephen and to uh, uh, our superintendent requesting this information prior to this meeting? And then they um, could have because Stephen's been very good about releasing information when he's asked, you know, uh, questions on on various items. The the reason is for this particular question, it would not stop me from voting on on that. Like I already know that those are approved it's, funds, so it's not a controversial thing. It's just, and it's I'm not something that I need today. I don't need it right today, so there's okay. no need for me to ask you for. But I did send him some um, some questions rega regarding this. And I'm glad you said that because I almost forgot my other question, which was um, a trans we, on that transfer document, we have $16,175 going to a student activity fund. Is that the field hockey you were referencing, Mr. Mersinger, that the student activity fund? No, the, the field hockey I'm referencing is a collaboration with Riverside. That's totally separate. And also it's, it's again, it's still in the planning stages. It's not being okay. implemented yet. So this question I did ask of Mr. Burns and I asked what that money was, was going to be used for, but um, he did not answer that particular question. So what would that $6,000? Yeah, I answered the email from the soccer field at 615. Yeah, Vera, we got this email an hour ago. Yeah. Um, this particular one, uh, I yeah, the answer is simple. I'll answer the question. I don't have a problem. Uh, the answer is simple. It's a one-sided transfer. There is no, there is no, it's a student activity account. I set up, as I mentioned last week, I'm setting up more things in CSI. To set up those accounts in CSI, I have to set up the accounts. It's a one-sided transfer to put all the money that's in the bank, set up in that account. There's really nothing 
Oscar Roman. I'm just curious because I thought we didn't have, like when I see student activity, I might have the wrong idea. I'm thinking student activity means like an after school sports team or a club. Maybe it means something else. It could it's a student activity fund. So it's not, it is money that was raised by activities in our school programs and so that is collected for that purpose and has to be used for that purpose. For example, if you had a field hockey team and they collected a fundraiser, it would be deposited into a student activity account that could be used for the field hockey program in the future. Uh, in terms of like maybe like uniforms or some other, you know, okay. whatever. So we, we, haven't we haven't decided what that money's going to go for yet, correct? That would be the determination of the, of the advisor of that activity. I mean, okay. obviously with approval, with approval from the, from the purchasing agent. But I mean, it's, that, money's gonna, that money is not the general fund, is kind of my point. Okay. Do we have any activities slated to be, for that money to be used for? It's all those accounts are separated by activity. You, you don't see that, but if you look in the actual Quicken program, there's about 10, 20 activities that they send me to $16,000. So, for example, Dan may have a thousand. I'm making these numbers up, don't hold me to okay. them. Um, you know, I'm still high school, so high school, my god, you have $300,000 in it. You need the senior quest advisor position, you're the junior quest advisor position. You have all those, all the, all those classes, you'd have student council, you'd have interact okay. and it's, so, it's, it really raises a lot of money it has, it's not, in other words it's not it's not the board's money it's actually the kids money okay well, it's, so it's just, hard to, just to provide more insights Vera, mm -hmm. that like for example one good example of that is ban right and you know using student activities funds for us to have ban this year uh you know that type of thing whereas uh, we might not be able to have band if it weren't for that fund. You know, we know that our budget is very tight. We know that we had a riff of our music teacher two years ago, a riff of our music teacher this past year. You know, so these are things that help us to have the activities. Okay, so we will have some kind of activity. So that's good to know. Uh, my other question is on letter Q, special education tuition contract. Um, I did see that in um, the confidential packet did, uh, but I didn't see what choice we're going to do. It, it said if Delanco can't provide an aid, then Delanco will be charged $200 a day for an aid, which, which um, 36,000, that seems reasonable. Is that what we decided on? Because I didn't, there was that choice. So is that what we're doing? We're doing the $200 a day for the aid? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that, that answered that one. And I have one more question for Ms. Guerin. Um, if my daughter, if my husband is a custodian, I think the answer is no, but I just want to double check. Uh, for example, if my husband is a custodian in another district and we're voting on some sort of whatever contract that involves that other district, do I need to recuse myself or no? Is that a question directed to me? Yes. Okay. So um, the question is, do you have a conflict? And the um, probable answer is, is probably yes, but it would depend specifically on the nature of the contract, the services provided, and to the extent it impacts your husband. But you do not want to be voting on anything. You don't want to be voting on anything that involves your husband's employer. You would have to recuse yourself from that. Okay. So we do have a board member who, uh, whose spouse is an employee of a district where we're voting on a contract. So should we hold off on voting on that till things are, you have clarity on that or it's not necessary? Well, if, if, if that board and I and just for the benefit of the rest of the board, this question was not forwarded to me in advance. Um, so I don't know what the contract is and I don't know the board member and I don't know if there's an actual conflict or not. Um, but if you, it's something that needs to be acted on tonight, so I don't have an opportunity to look at it further, I would recommend that that board member recuse him or herself and let the balance of the board vote. As okay. an ultra, and that would be as an ultra conservative um, safeguard in this one particular circumstance. Okay, so I'm talking about letter M, which is a contract with Edgewater Park. 
And I believe uh, Mr. Dovey, your wife is still an aide in Edgewater Park. Is that she correct? Is. Yes, she is, but she's not a member of the- uh, The union. Uh, the union. She's a part-time employee. Okay, so with that additional, if we, if we want to be extra careful, um, Ms. Guerin, your advice still stands? So it's a special ed contract for, uh, no, I, I don't think that raises a conflict. Yeah, she it's doesn't work with special ed. It has nothing to do with special ed. It, I'm assuming um, she's a part-time what, part-time aide? Part-time teacher's aide. Part-time teacher's aide. I don't see any conflict there. Okay, thank you. Those are all my questions and comments. Excellent. All right, if there are no other questions or comments, this is a roll call vote. Steve, you are on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to roll call. That's okay. <laughs> I'm, waiting for, I'm waiting for people to vote. I'm like, why is anyone voting? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Ms. Darmo. Ms. Darmo. Sorry about that. Um, no. Are you are you ready for my vote? Yes. My help? Okay. So I'm voting no. A for apple. B for boy. D for David. G for girl. I for ice cream. Okay. Yep. And, and yes, C for cat, E for elephant, F for flower, H for horse, J for jam through letter P for people, and then Q, R, S. Those are all yes votes. Can I repeat that back to you? Yes. No, A, B, D, G, I. Mm -hmm. So four items for no, A, B, D, G, I. Correct. Just for everything else, basically. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Derby. I am voting yes on everything, and I'll abstain on M, as in Mary. Uh, Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes on everything. Ms. Karen Eugene. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, yes. Uh, Ms. Teresich Keeley. Yes. Thank you. Does the motion carry on all items then, Steve? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Motion carries. I appreciate that. Thank you. Operations and facilities report on maintenance activities, exhibit DD, policy. There's nothing to report at this time. Personnel, if we were to refer to the addendum, uh, I'm requesting a motion to approve the following. A, stipends for 2021-2022 revised exhibit EE, hiring of John Mulhern as a part-time instructional aide, 4.75 hours per day at a rate of $12 per hour with a start date of 9-1-2021, appointment of M. Christopher Hazinski as the homebound instruction teacher for grade eight student at the DTEA rate of $55 per hour for five hours per week with a start date and end date to be determined. D, leave of absence for Jessica Fitzwater, grade three teacher with a start date of 9-1-2021 and an anticipated end date of 9-26-2021. Resignation of Jennifer Niver, instructional aide, effective 8-16-2021. Resignation of Sandra Marazzo, instructional aide, effective 9-3-2021. Updated substitute list, exhibit FF. Hiring of Amy Shawhas as a part-time instructional aide, 4.75 hours per day at a rate of $12 per hour with a start date to be determined pending required background checks. Uncompensated leave for Jessica Fitzwater, grade three teacher in accordance with board policy 3431 with a start date of 9-27-2021 and an anticipated end date of 6-30-2022. I request a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Cameron. Are there any questions or comments? 
Okay, all in favor? Roll call. Aye. Roll call. Oh, that's my mistake. Roll call. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Ms. Donna? Yes. Mr. Bo <clears throat> Mr. Doby? Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Kevin Eugene? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Teresa Chile? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Board liaison reports. This Mr. C. Cameron Jenkins. Again. Uh, before yeah. we move on to liaisons, could I make a comment about personnel that doesn't relate to the voting? Yes. Thank you. First, I just wanted to take a moment to, to welcome our new staff members to the Delanco team. As you can see, we have John Mulhern, who's joining the team. He's actually served as a substitute for a number of years. Now he's going to be serving as an instructor, sorry, instructional aide. And we also have uh, Amy Shellhaas, who is joining the team as an instructional aide. So I wanted to welcome those staff members. And then also, uh, as I said last week uh, during our work session, I just wanted to thank all of our staff members for doing an amazing job for the start of the school year. Uh, thank you to the teachers, to the instructional aides, secretaries, nurses, facilities team, administrators, everyone. Uh, I think that the start of the school year has been particularly challenging because we're still really uh, in the COVID-19 Sorry, we're still really in the COVID-19 situation and, and it's, it's still impacting us. So thank you to the staff members for being able to roll with the punches. I also wanted to take a moment to thank the parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and the students, of course, for being very flexible as we begin a new school year. And we're, we're still facing some challenges from COVID-19 and other areas. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, to everyone. Thanks, Mrs. Cameron. You're welcome. Thank you. Board lays on reports. Mr. C. Jenkins, Riverside. Thank you, Marissa. All right. So uh, we had our meeting last Thursday. Nothing too crazy was talked about, discussed, or voted upon, but just some highlights. Uh, Riverside Middle School, they changed around their grading uh, scale to be in line with how the high school grades. So now they're on the 10 point scale for 90 to 100, A, 80 to 89 for B, and so on and so forth. Um, homecoming is proceeding in some form. There's nothing definite or concrete yet, but homecoming will be occurring next month. So the kids should be able to enjoy that. Uh, let's see. Uh, other than that, nothing else too crazy was going on. I think our meeting last Thursday lasted 17 minutes, but if anything else comes up like the field hockey stuff, I will uh, definitely email you and Joe about it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Mr. Litwack is not present this evening, so we're gonna move on from there. Township Committee, Mrs. Tercet Keeley. Uh, yep, so there was another meeting on Monday and the big topic um, that went on for a while was about uh, community input on the use of 200 Ash Street, um, which the township purchased last year, I think it was, can't remember. Anyway, they purchased it recently. Um, and there were a lot of good suggestions, uh, a park, saving the building, uh, knocking it down, rezoning it and selling it to somebody else for use. Um, I asked about a plan to backfill lost taxes to the school, which was not received very well. Um, and uh, I mean, I so I guess the, the one, the idea that I think would most benefit the school longer term would be for them to rezone it as a commercial space, potentially um, and gain, gain taxes on the on the on the uh, on the land. But um, there were no obviously conclusions made, um, other than that they will be likely knocking it down. Um, I guess any questions about that before I do my other two bullet points? No. Um, the county is repaving Cooperstown Road from 130 to Burlington Avenue, which will be great news for students who have to walk to school and they can walk on sidewalks now that aren't all crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just some good news I wanted to share. Um, they'll be putting in ramps too, so it'll be handicap accessible, which is great. And then they did approve the creation of the Cannabis Committee. Um, they actually didn't talk about it at all, so I don't have any updates on it. They didn't talk about who was gonna be appointed to it or anything. Um, just to prove the creation of it. So maybe more details to come on that soon. That's all I have. Awesome, thank you. Is there anything to discuss in old business? 
Is there anything to discuss in new business? I have some topics for new business. Okay. Um, I brought it up earlier, but now I'll bring it up again because it uh, fits here. So the, the um, state mandated bullying timelines when incidents have to report, be reported, I believe something, a possible incident that's witnessed should be reported verbally the same day to the uh, district bullying coordinator or their designee. Um, and there are also other timelines like um, when, when things have to be put in writing, reports to the board, there are a lot of regulations. And so my question for Mr. Mersinger was, are staff at all different levels who, would, who might possibly witness an incident of bullying say in the cafeteria, the cafeteria workers, um, the bus driver, the crossing guards, the teachers are usually very, um, get a lot of in-service, but are all levels of staff aware of the procedure for bullying, Mr. Mersinger? So the answer to that is uh, all Delanco staff members are trained in HIV, harassment, intimidation, and bullying and um, they receive that training annually. When it comes to other staff though, uh, we outsource for food service, we outsource for bus drivers, and we outsource for, and, and uh, crossing guards are handled by the township. So they are not our employees. Uh, does that mean that they shouldn't report bullying? Certainly not. They should report it if, if they see it, uh, but at the same time, they're not our employees. So our, all of our district employees receive training. Now, anyone who is on school grounds that might witness something, you know, what, what I do is I send a message to the whole staff saying, here's our policy, here's the information you need. Uh, we do have our outsourced staff receive that. When it comes to bus drivers, uh, you know, that's something that I could share with, with James Heiser, but the, the policies and procedures, they come from state statutes. So uh, that's something that if, if someone is working for an outsourced company, that company should be providing training to their employees related to statutes that apply to being in a school district. Um, just a follow up to that. Um, if something happens, on, a bullying incident happens on the bus or where, or in the cafeteria, or whatever. Even those are, you know, you said they those employees do receive some sort of information about that. The main thing is that the district can still be held liable for um, an incident if a, if a parent wants, if a parent has a case, they can still be held, we can be held liable, we can be sued, um, even though the incident happened in front of someone who wasn't a district employee. So I hope that for the sake of the student, not just for the sake of not being sued, but for the sake of all students, I hope that we can really um, ensure that bus drivers, crossing guards, cafeteria staff, they all know what constitutes probable bullying and to report it. And my other- um, Also, my, uh, just so uh, you're aware, kitchen staff do not supervise students in any capacity. So we always have other staff present when kitchen staff are there. So. You know, if you're if you're believing that a kitchen staff member is going to see something, uh, that kitchen staff member is in the kitchen working on food, not supervising students. But either way, I I understand your point completely. That any adult that could be observing a child in any way uh, could report something. So I will be sending information to families as well, uh, related to HIV and related to the process. You know, our our challenge this year is that we are very heavily backlogged with various issues. Uh, we've had staffing issues all summer. We continue to have staffing issues. And so um, we have COVID-19 impacting our staff as well. So one thing that we are backlogged on right now is the, the back to school packet that typically uh, gets sent to parents. And that's something that I'm working on with a team member tomorrow uh, with the goal of having everything out by Friday. And would we like to have that out on September 1st? Absolutely. But, it, but on September 1st, we were also missing a handful of staff members. Uh, we've had COVID-19 challenges. So, I mean, it's, we're, again, we're rolling with the punches right now when it comes to all the challenges we're facing. Um, I know from um, Jesse Adams, 
uh, he said in, I think, the first ethics training I received when I asked if I could go directly to parents and ask them how things were going, could I go directly to teacher and, teachers and ask them? He said, no, absolutely not. I need to wait for a parent after going through the chain of command, which doesn't start, start with the Board of Ed. I have to wait for the parent to come and tell me a concern after they've gone through the chain of command. I have to wait for teachers to show up at a board meeting. I can't ask them anything. So I haven't seen this happening at, at board meetings. I haven't seen um, parents really expressing themselves, but I, I did see a concern. And you know I do direct parents to email Mr. Mersinger, but for some reason, um, they, they're not doing that. But there was a comment about, I heard about lunch tables not being enough lunch tables. My first thought was maybe that's because of the social distancing that has to happen in the cafeteria. Um, does this ring any bell? Because I did not feel comfortable engaging in a back and forth with a parent. Well, Ms. Darmo, I agree with you that you should not engage in that back and forth with a parent. And we have team members that work on these things. So for example, if it relates to Pearson, uh, it should go to the proper staff member at Pearson. And if that person can't resolve it, then John Caracasian would get involved. John can't resolve it, I get involved. And likewise for Walnut, you know, it'll, it, it should eventually get to Barry Sade. And then if, if Barry needs assistance or can't resolve it or whatever the case is, I'll, I'll get involved as well. But yes, there is a chain of command. And if somebody has a, a question about lunch tables, for example, you know, that's something that, you know, they're not going to reach out to NutriServe, our food service coordinator about that, but they could reach out to John or Barry and say, here's a concern. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's something that's the, the onus is on someone to actually come to us with that challenge. Although I have heard I've heard through the great that people will issue complaints on Facebook and then not come to the district. My, my philosophy on that is if you put it on Facebook, you, that might help you to vent and help you to interact with others about it, but that's not helping the district to resolve the challenge. So it's important to go to the proper people who can help resolve the challenge. Okay, but anyway, that can be on our radar as something to watch out for. And my other comment is on um, learning loss. What are we as a district, you know, as a teacher, I know for any sort of trying to catch students up because that's mainly what I deal with with my immigrant students, I have to catch them up. That basically is done in small groups because um, the other kids might be at a different point and I have to catch these kids up. I, I need a small group of students in order to do that. Are we doing any extra um, activities to address learning loss? Well, we're receiving ARP funds and we're actually developing a plan for that. There's a certain portion of the funds that is directly linked to that topic. So we're gonna be developing a plan for how to address learning loss with that funding. But again, the challenge with that is, is it sustainable for us? Um, we have to look at it over this year and next year. Uh, another thing too is the ESSER II funds, uh, although they don't call it learning loss, uh, the ESSER II funds have a provision for ELA support and STEM support for students, which that is part of our plan and it's something we're gonna be rolling out soon. So the answer is yes. We do have a couple of things, number one, already planned that will, will start soon, but we also have other things that still haven't been fully planned yet related to the learning loss. Uh, so, uh, so there's that. And then also we still have, we have a basic skills program that assists students with basic skills. Uh, that, that's part of addressing learning loss in general. And, and also the teachers. Uh, we, we have our, our teachers in the classrooms are, are fully aware of the fact that students over the past year and a half didn't have the same type of learning that they typically had. So, you know, we have SEL measures in place, that social and emotional learning. And we also have measures in place just in general so that teachers understand, you know, that, that students will need more support right now. That students that, that typically might not even need that same level of support need more support right now because we're coming off of a year and a half of very atypical learning. 
Okay, thank you. Those are all my comments and questions. Thank you. I'd like to say something for a new business there, Marissa. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, I did have a to go to the Monday night meeting talking about uh, the old canvas shop. And Kat did bring up a very strong point about the $10,000 we are losing in you know, tax money from that. I did bring up a couple comments about, you know, why we should be, you know, what we should do with the building and all that. Unfortunately, you know, everybody in township committee did vote in favor of raising the structure, which will probably cost us about $100,000. But there were some interesting comments. Somebody did make a comment about the fact that if it was, I had said, why don't we just rezone it for maybe apartments or something like that at a diff different density. And one comment that was made was it would bring children into the school system. So that was a very good point there. Um, I do have a question for Amy though. Uh, Amy, one of the tra uh, training courses we've had and Jesse's been with us, he has specifically said that we should keep comments or not comment on social media. But it seems like I'm starting to see a lot of things showing up on social media. What should we do about that? Is there anything we as a board can do about that? You know, I don't know, you know, I just, sometimes the information out there is incorrect information. Sometimes it seems like it's stirring the pot. Is there anything we as a whole board could do to stop that? Well, you can't control what others are posting, what others are doing. Um, and it's a challenge that a lot of school boards face. In general, if you make public comments, your obligation as an individual is to clarify that you are not speaking for the board. You have to proactively disclose that um, these are your personal thoughts and comments and that you do not speak for the Board of Education. Um, the only exception to that, of course, is if the board deliberates and appoints someone or nominates someone to respond and speak on the board's behalf. Otherwise, if you're going to go out into the community or whether on social media or otherwise, um, you have to be clear that you are speaking as an individual and representing your own views. Logistically, whether you respond to social media posts or not, uh, you know, once you start responding, you tend to go down the rabbit hole. Um, so what I'm thinking is, and it's ironic, I, I had this very same discussion with a different board on Monday night um, where they were having issues. Um, they were debating opening up their superintendent's contract and there was a lot of misinformation about the process out on social media and the board was frustrated because it, it, it generated a lot of negative comments during the meeting itself. Um, what, they what, what they decided was to um, collaborate, well, to all approve, you can't have nine people writing a statement, but to at least appoint one or two people to write a statement that corrected the misinformation and then to either read it out at a board meeting or to post it on your website. So you can be proactive as a board in responding to those things. Is that helpful? Is that what you were getting at? Yes, that's very helpful. I do appreciate the input. Thank you. Amy, I have a, a follow-up <laughs> on that. Are you saying that if a board chooses to have a policy of one person as being a spokesperson for the board, are you saying that other board members then give up their right to comment on social media about the schools, even if they, I say specifically, they're not speaking for the board? Are you saying that that's possible? No, what I'm saying is if the board wants to officially come out with a statement, the board can vote to appoint a spokesperson on an issue or to collect or to approve a statement uh, or approve a web posting. My point being that whatever the method of communication you choose, the board as a whole has to vote to approve the communication. That is separate and apart from individual board members exercising their first amendment rights to speak out as individuals. The extra obligation that is imposed upon board members is that if you're going to speak out as an individual, you have to proactively clarify that you do not speak for the board, that even though you are a member of the Board of Education, your viewpoints are not ascribed to the board in any way and that you are speaking solely for yourself. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other topics for new business? Are all distributions out? I assume so. 
I will now open this up for public comment on non-agenda items. And I do have a comment from the online form from Danielle Foley, 14 Team and Circle. And I'm going to have to use my phone because I have too many screens on here, but I have it here. And she states, I have two public comments that I would like to share. First and foremost, thank you to each and every single staff member for a successful start of the school year. I know you all face many challenges. However, you always show up and give it your all for your children, for our children. I truly appreciate all your hard work and time. Second, as a parent and a member of the community, either my husband or I have been attending the board meetings faithfully for the past three years. I am very well aware of the issues and tension that the Lanco schools and the members of the Board of Education face. I respect and appreciate every single staff member, administrator, and board member. I know we all want the same thing, the best for our children. However, I am appalled by the frequent behaviors and interactions that take place during the work sessions and board meetings between some members. What message are we sending the community? More importantly, what message are we sending our children? Naturally, there is going to be disagreements and conflicting opinions. Would we allow our children to speak to each other the way some members speak to each other? I personally don't think so. I know for a fact as a teacher myself, I would never allow such behavior and conduct to occur in my classroom. And the same goes for my own personal children. We need to respect each other even if we disagree. So please, members of the board, set a good example. I thank all of you for serving on the board and especially and appreciate and thank Ms. Kara Manugian for being an incredible leader and fair board president. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that comment. Very Actually, much. Can, I, can I piggyback on that? Um, actually, Marissa, would you be able to just email that comment to the board so that we all have it in writing in front of us? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, we can do that. Cool. Thank you. And I thank you for your comment, Daniel. Okay, does anybody else in the public have a comment on a non-agenda item? Yes, hello. Excuse me, Mr. Templeton, Mayor Templeton. <laughs> Uh, good evening. Uh, nice to see everybody. Uh, hopefully the the internet connection holds up. The audio has been pretty rough, and I I dropped off and then relogged in, so it's it seems to be a little better. So um, I want to correct uh, uh, something that Miss uh, Miss uh, Tersich Keeley said uh, uh, about the canvas shop, the shoe factory, and that was uh, an incorrect statement. And then it was repeated by Mr. Jenkins. Um, regarding supposed lost tax revenue from that property uh, to the school and backfilling, I think was the term backfilling the school budget. Um, you didn't lose anything. Uh, whatever budget you cut, you get the full amount, regardless of what happens anywhere in town. Um, and I don't understand why too many board members don't understand how your own financial um, how, how your own finances work. Um, we've gone through, we went through this, we spent a lot of time. Uh, I know I've made a lot of comments earlier in the spring at a couple meetings about uh, really how your budget works and how the township does not give you money to do have your, you know, doesn't uh, tell you how much money. Uh, you have to spend or create a budget. That's your responsibility. And whatever you, you put on paper, that's what you get, period, to the penny. And this, this resurfacing of this misunder, fundamental misunderstanding, it's, it's, um, it's, I don't understand where it keeps coming from. So, um, but just to continue on, uh, the township uh, regarding the, the shoe factory, the canvas shop, we did decide to, uh, uh, after listening to about an hour and a half of comments, a lot of good comments as uh, has been has been noted, um, the condition of the structure and the economics of saving it or trying to restore it or make it into something else is just well, well financially way over our heads. Um, and so um, there was a lot of information that was put out, uh, the structural report, environmental reports, um, some analysis of uh, uh, possible costs to uh, 
stabilize the building. Uh, in our budget uh, this year, we have budgeted uh, $100,000 towards the demo. Uh, that's already in our budget. Uh, one of the options was to spend about that $130,000 to stabilize the building to defer the decision on what to do with it. So um, economically, it made the most sense to bring the building down. And uh, the committee's intention is to eventually make that as a, uh, a creekfront park. Uh, but that's still in the very early, early uh, planning stages. So um, I would, uh, on a different topic, uh, wanted to add that uh, for the last couple of months, uh, I've been working with uh, Mrs. Martin up in the planning board office uh, and with the planners at the Burlington County Bridge Commission on a Route 130, uh, uh, what they call a um, endorsement, reendorsement of the Route 130 Delaware River Corridor Plan. It's a 10 year renewal uh, involving 12, com uh, 12 neighboring communities along the river. And uh, we've created a citizens uh, advisory group of which uh, the board president, uh, Mrs. Kara Manugian is a member. And uh, we had uh, two Zoom meetings over the last couple of weeks uh, to get their input on some things, uh, some of the documents which are, are quite voluminous. And uh, Mrs. Kara Manugian brought up uh, uh, as far as infrastructure, uh, sidewalks and safe uh, walking paths for students to schools and so forth. And uh, I reiterated what I had written in the document uh, and one of the early documents that we had submitted back in December and January, um, the difficulties of uh, small school districts uh, among the river towns and the impact, uh, the strains, the financial strains that development places on uh, the school districts. And so that, uh, that, uh, those comments are being added to in uh, two different documents, a municipal self-assessment and a questionnaire that goes up to the Department of State at the, in Trenton, uh, the Office of Planning Advocacy. And so that becomes basically a regional master plan. So those are some of the things that uh, I've been working on and uh, Mrs. Karen Manugian is part of that citizens group. Um, third item I, I did wanna mention, I had a, a meeting with um, uh, managers and one of the principals of a, a outfit that uh, builds affordable housing projects across New Jersey and has uh, completed one in Delanco. And then talking with them was just about some uh, uh, local issues and more or less started out uh, as a meet and greet. And I mentioned to them that the, uh, uh, some of the strains that uh, new development uh, brings to uh, uh, a small district and so forth. And uh, the, uh, the principal of this, this firm, who's an attorney and, and very well versed in, in affordable housing law and, and uh, the economics of it all, um, really commended Delanco for getting out in front of the, during this last third round of affordable housing that uh, many towns are still trying to work through. And being at the forefront of that, uh, when we, uh, when Delanco did uh, get a court approved uh, project that was uh, approved uh, a couple of years ago, uh, it really, uh, we got ahead of the pack and we were able to, at that time, uh, that developer was able to secure uh, significant federal uh, tax credits uh, that really make those projects economically viable. And uh, they said that uh, they've got uh, eight or 10 different projects or developments across the state and so forth. And so they keep an eye on, on those communities and other communities for uh, uh, future potential and so forth. And they said that uh, uh, in, in because the the process has now so become so competitive uh, for, for federal funding and the federal tax credits, um, what's happened is that they really they look at school performance as far as part part of the grading criteria, and they said that the uh, struggling districts and uh, underperforming districts um, don't don't accrue enough credits on the, the scoring for these applications um, to be competitive for federal funding for affordable housing projects. 
and you think, well, that's that's that would be a good thing that uh, if there's no money to to do that, then you kind of you know uh, dodged uh, having to provide that. Well, the, the the real answer is that requirement. Uh, whether you're still a community still dealing with the third round that's ongoing or the fourth round that starts in a couple of years, that requirement is still a state state law. You still have to fulfill that requirement for X number of units, whatever that will be. And what that means is that if you cannot be competitive in your application, in the in the developer's application and really the community's application, uh, as far as taking federal tax credits or or other incentives that can make it viable, economically viable. What that means is the municipality out of their own pocket has to um, basically support that project to comply with the state law. And so um, it's a huge factor. And, and, and it was something um, something I learned yesterday that it, uh, it, uh, it's looked at at the federal level as what the performance of school, of, uh, school district is. They look at the park school scores um, and all the standardized testing and so forth. So um, what happens here could have a big impact in a couple of years. So those are the three topics. Uh, like I said, I, I'd, I'd like to see uh, some understanding of, of, of how you know, our respective budgets work and where the money comes from and how you get it. But more importantly, there needs to be uh, somehow, somewhere, an understanding on this board that whatever budget you you craft, uh, whatever uh, pen to paper you end up with, that's the money you get. And it doesn't matter what happens elsewhere in town. The valuations, uh, the total valuation in Delanco is about 400, uh, a little over $400 million, all the properties, all the assessed values and so forth. And so that value is always floating up and down. Um, and so the tax, why the tax rate kind of wobbles each year. But uh, uh, there needs to be a fundamental understanding that uh, uh, a property being sold or a property coming off the rolls or, or uh, you know, I know in the springtime there was a lot of talk about the pilots, uh, the tax abatements and so forth, which I've been steadfast against for the whole time I've been sitting in this chair. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you get you get right down on paper, period. And so, um, make, a budget, make a budget that our kids need. So, anyway, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have public comment on a non-agenda item? Or uh, Phil, did you want to speak? Uh, no, I. Okay. I'm not going to say anything. Thank you. Okay, no problem. I just saw you take yourself off mute, so I want to be sure. Um, Mr. Massa, please. Good evening, Marissa. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to say something based upon uh, something I heard previously within this meeting. Uh, that there was a previous comment, uh, public comment in this particular section regarding the, how do I say it, unfortunate way that some of the public interactions during Board of Education work sessions have gone. Um, yeah, I'd like to echo some of those comments, but also point out that this unfortunately isn't just in work sessions. I mean, just in this session, we, we had one board member who was very passionate about learning loss uh, with, with quote immigrant students. And, and I want to stress that not all ESL students are immigrants, not all students experiencing some sort of learning loss uh, you know, are, they're experiencing it for all different reasons, whether, you know, not because of their gender, race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, academic strength, etc. cetera. I, I wholly uh, respect and appreciate everybody on the board and the Delanco staff, but just, just please be more cognizant when, when speaking like that, because that, that could really offend somebody. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Does anybody else have any public comment on a non-agenda item? I don't see any additional hands going up. So I will close the public comment on non-agenda items. And I, I did not see a reason to go into executive session. 
Does anybody on the board have a reason to go into executive session that has not been previously noted? Okay. If not, then I would like a motion to adjourn, please. Motion by Phil. Second Thank by Cameron. Phil. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Cameron. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Please have a wonderful evening. Thank you. I appreciate Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.